Hello. Hello. I'm so happy you're here today. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be a very chill episode. More of like a boy talk 20s, just like kind of hang out. Amazing. Um, you love Celsius. I love Celsius. <laughs> we were talking about this before we started. We love Celsius and I, I stand beside him. I don't care what's going on. I'm pretty sure it is like a cancer thing. Right? What's going on? They I'm have like, some I don't sort know of lawsuit. Something, uh, they got recalled for something. I'm not sure what it's doing to people, but I honestly, like, ig- ignorance is bliss. I don't want to know. What's crazier to me, is though, is the fact that you drink two of them a day. Sometimes I drink one. That sounds horrible. Honestly, Celsius, sponsor me, please. I've been trying to Seriously. get sponsored by Celsius for so long, but it's just so good. And it, it is really good. I feel like coffee made me feel, like, nauseous and, like, I would get, like, a crash in Celsius. I'm like, woo! I was telling Brooker this earlier. I used to go to morning hot Pilates every day, and I would gi- I would drink my Celsius before class because by the end of it, it would, you would sweat it all out. Yeah, and you feel like you didn't even have one. Exactly, and it was amazing. And then I started drinking them when I moved and I was living in Dallas, and I would drink it midday, and I would have, like, a motherfucking panic attack. Crack, like Cracked out. I, oh, my God. I was like, it wasn't even, like, the, you know when you're, like, you have way too much energy to the point where it's actually kind of helpful because maybe you'll clean your house or something. Yeah. No, it was like panic attack, anxiety, anxious mess, like I, existential crisis. It was not There good. is like a hill you go over. It's like, <laughs> yay, yay, yay. And then you're like, oh my God, I'm going to die. No, literally. But they do taste really good and I have been a big fan. Yeah. I'm going to drink it till I die. Yeah. Or <laughs> until it kills me. <laughs> so how long have you been in LA now? I've been here now five years. How are you liking it? I love it so much. How do you like the dating here? I don't know. I honestly haven't really experienced dating here very much because, like, my only real, like, relationship since I've been here has been, wasn't long distance, but he was, like, he was always traveling, so I was just traveling with him. We weren't, like, in L.A. while we were dating, so I don't feel like I've experienced it that much, although saying that, I'm, like, maybe that's why because it's hard to date in L.A. Are you on the apps? I'm on the apps. Um, I haven't found any success on the apps. I had one... I've talked about this on another podcast. I had one good date from the apps and and got Wait, ghosted. Take me through the date. It wasn't a date. Let me talk. Let me talk to you about this <laughs> really quick. If a man invites you to his house as a first date, it is not a date. Yeah. Okay. That is not That's a date. how I usually feel. However, in this particular circumstance, I had already been talking to this guy for like a while, like just texting back and forth, and he was so fun, so funny. And I like had known him through mutual friends, so I didn't feel like he was gonna like kill me. Mm-hmm. Um, but we like played board games at his house. It was actually like a really wholesome date. We didn't hook up or anything. It was just like, it was just a good date. And I was like, I left there. Like, I love this man. Like, I literally love him. This is my husband. Never spoke to me again. <gasps> love that. So. Did you ever like hit him up or? No. Mm, okay. But I ran into him. This is so funny. I literally just ran into him last week for the first time since that had happened. We had texted after that a little bit, like. He, like, t- had told me about a book, so we, like, talked about the book, and, like... So he didn't he ghost sent me, He sent you. me the book, like, he didn't... Yeah, he didn't ghost me, but we... <laughs> it, it didn't go anywhere, okay. is what I should say. Um, and he's, like, he's got a lot going on. But I ran into t- to him the other night, and I, I follow him on Instagram, so I, like, know... I've kind of kept up with him. And I went up to him, and I was, like... Or he came up to me, gave me a hug, good to see you, whatever. And I told him, I'm, like, congratulations, he's a producer. Um, I'm like, congratulations, like, I saw you got nominated for a Grammy. And he goes, a few. Shut up. I was like, oh Uh, my god, I was so humbled, I literally, I was like, I'm never ever talking to a man ever again. No, that's like so cringy. It was, okay, that's so pretentious. It was, and the next morning, I was like, you know what, like, that was so, like, the face that I made at this guy, I literally was like, like, that is the most embarrassing thing ever, but I went to his Instagram the next day and I realized he was nominated for like literally like nine Grammys. So I was like, okay, I would have said that too. For sure. <laughs> okay, honestly, if at you're a certain for point, nine, it's like you get a pass. Yeah. And that's probably why he never talked to me again. Like he but He was busy with his Grammys. He's, da- he's dating up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like on the apps, like what is your go to thing to talk about? Because this is my issue on apps. It's like, what do you say? Hi, hi. And that's, I literally, that's what I said. That's it. The issue is I never get that far. It's like I match with someone, I get excited about it, and I never, ever Respond. talk to them. Yeah. I'm more of like, or if I'm interested in somebody like online or something, I'll just DM them on Instagram. Like, I feel like. Okay, what's the DM? It depends. Sometimes I'll say like, can we hang out? Or I'll just say like, hi. I have friends who say like really crazy things, but I usually just be like, hey chill yeah sometimes i mean i think it's also easy if you're like pulling something from their profile yeah to, like, talk about but i'm lazy so i would just say hi yeah well i mean i feel like the more you say 
I guess I wouldn't respond to a DM that just said hi. Exactly. So maybe, that's the problem. Yeah. Okay. So maybe, well, we maybe, maybe to, that's why I, was, I suck so bad at it. I'm like, do you have anyone you need to DM? Maybe we can grab, <laughs> we can grab I don't one right up. now. We'll keep you posted. Yeah. Okay. So what is, you've been very open about going through a breakup online. Yes. What is, let's go through like a one-on-one guide to heartbreak and breakups. I will say anybody um, in their right mind would not take breakup advice from me (laughs) because I can't tell you how horribly I took this breakup and like the way that I was behaving and acting and feeling like I there's no way I'm qualified to speak on it. However, I would say like the most important thing for me was like my friends if I didn't have my friends because at that time like being my friend was a major responsibility because I was like (laughs) you like it was dark I was like so distraught and like all my friends were like girl like what is going on so having them was like my number one thing but honestly I blacked out that whole time and okay I no well idea. Look, this is even better because this is I'm <laughs> like I, I have good ad- breakup advice now because I, I've done it so poorly so many times so how were you acting like what were you doing I was just like I was insane like I was <laughs> genuinely insane like I, I was so upset and like were you caught off guard yes okay. yeah, oh yeah well yes absolutely but like it was a bad relationship we fought the whole time like the whole time i knew it was gonna end i just like didn't think i would be so upset over it and i was oh my god you would not believe do you feel like you like lost yourself in the relationship yes badly like i just talked about this on another podcast but i like adopted his lifestyle very much like i wasn't podcasting anymore i wasn't really doing as much social media so i was just like along for his ride and what he was doing and i enjoyed it a lot like I, I like loved him and I loved what he was doing and I was so proud of him but I didn't do anything for me the whole time so like when it was over I was like oh my god I have nothing to fall back on I have nothing to do like I haven't seen my friends in six months like it was crazy it was just I was so lost but won't make that mistake again that's for sure were your friends like annoyed that you were gone or were they just like oh she's in love whatever I think that they were all like I was very um like hesitant to tell my friends like how the relationship actually was or like what was going on so I feel like they were all so excited about it and they were like oh she's so happy she's so in love it's so amazing and like they loved him and once I like kind of filled them in a bit they were like girl what were you doing so they were supportive and like welcomed me back when it was over but I feel like the second you're like you start to not necessarily lie to your friends but maybe omit omit the truth yeah is is the the telltale sign that like things are not going great that's my number one indicator if like if i have something that i'm embarrassed to tell my friends or like something like i i feel like i shouldn't tell my friends run literally run i will never do that again because it's like it's the worst come on brooke i look back at guys that i've dated and just things that i just you know maybe didn't share at the time maybe it was a timing thing and i had to tell them like six months after the relationship and they're like i cannot believe that you just didn't even like that was it's not even that it was a lie i mean i guess it was because you were just like things you weren't saying yes it's like it's embarrassing but it's a really isolating place to be in too and then when you're going through the breakup like when your friends don't even understand that it was actually bad it's just a very isolating like place it's horrible and i wouldn't recommend listen to me if you're going through it if there's something you can't tell your friends like please 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 get out of it so now I'm, I'm telling my friends too much yeah same i'm like they're like please can you feel the love of god shut the fuck up you know what i mean <laughs> do you know are you familiar with attachment theory kind of okay so i think you would like really like this there's also this book attached and they need to turn this maybe they have into like podcasts because it is the most helpful book i've ever read in relation to like relationships in general really but the I, I tend, like attachment theory, it's weird because the way that like your attachment style is developed in like your first like two years of life or something. Yeah, I do. I I follow like a psychiatrist on Twitter who like yes. talks a lot about like the different attachment styles and how like your childhood and like your parents and stuff can like it influence Impacted. how your attachment style is. So I definitely think I've like. What do you know? What you are. Um, I don't. Well, I've taken the test, so uh-huh. I've taken the test, and it tells me I'm like, God, I don't even remember. Anxious, what it says. avoidant, secure. Something. I honestly don't. I don't remember what it was, but it's like I. Re- I remember knowing or thinking that I wasn't what I got. Okay. But maybe I'm just not self-aware. <laughs> maybe that could be it. Well, okay. 
When there's a problem in a relationship, do you tend to cling on harder or do you run away? I feel like cling on harder. Okay, so you're probably anxious because I was anxious. And I still think I am, but I stopped dating for a while. And then I came back because I was like trying to get to like a secure attachment style. I'm like over the an- anxious. And then when you're an anxious attachment style, you only date avoidance. And then like it's just like the worst combination Great. ever. It's like perfect. perfect. <laughs> exactly what I was looking for. So now I think I've maybe gone a little too far into the avoidance. Yeah, see, that's what's hard is like that. I, I've always thought of myself, I think, as avoidant because I, I uh, avoided dating for so long. Like, <laughs> yeah. literally, I was avoiding it. Yeah. But like, I feel like once I'm in the relationship or once I really care about somebody, I'm like so attached that it's like scary. So I guess that's probably where the anxious thing comes in. And I felt like I just like felt things way deeper or like things were just like really hard for me. Like breakups felt a lot harder for me than what I consider to be for other people. And again, I'm not in their heads, but I was like, is everyone not having like the world is over this doom? No, you know, when I tell you this, maybe this is like a narcissistic thought, but I kept saying this during my breakup. I was like, there is no way, there's no way that everybody else feels this because nobody would ever date again. Because the way that I felt like during that breakup and how horrible it was for me, I was like, I like, I know that that's not what she went through. That's like, I know they weren't feeling that way. I also have like other mental like situations going on that probably like contribute to that but I was like there's no way like I I never want to date again also in a breakup though your emotions are so heightened so you're gonna feel things in such an extreme way and so when you're going through that and you're also not really thinking logically at all at all like don't make a single decision like other decision or like you know when it's like when you get bangs and stuff you know yeah be careful like yeah be careful but I think part of that too is just that the emotions are so heightened that the it bad is, is so bad and you can't think straight it's just like like when you're having a panic attack or something yes. it's like you cannot think logically I like I've experienced that now like now that it's I'm a few months out of the breakup and I like really feel so differently about it I can look at it and be like Brooke what like but at the time I was just so anxious and so like distraught that I couldn't think clearly I couldn't see it for what it was yeah if that makes sense so if someone's listening to this and they're like in the middle of the worst part ever and they want to be a few months out to where they're feeling better like what was it really just spending time with friends and allowing it to have time or were you like trying to like not like be more positive hippie but like think like there are other things out there like you know affirmations and like lucky girl syndrome like what were you doing i have i have a hard time with like um affirmations kind of just because i feel like i take myself like too seriously like i can't i can't um, it doesn't feel natural to me yeah it doesn't but like honestly yeah spending time with friends and really distracting myself i had like some new things like come about that i could like be excited about and like look forward to and that was what kind of like brought me out of it but it was like honestly like not to like scare anyone but it was like months that i was like so hopeless i was like this is gonna be i'm gonna die like i literally this is horrible but the other thing too i remember going through like my first heartbreak ever and i was like 17 18 i was very young and i remember thinking i had had one friend who had gone through a heartbreak prior and she was so dramatic and i remember thinking at the time before i had gone through one like how what the fuck like why are you why are you so crazy and then you go through it and you're like oh my god my world is over no No one warned me i had to do a round of like apologies i'm not when i because (laughs) like what you said your first heartbreak is obviously like really really hard too and that's kind of like what this was for me I had like been heartbroken before but like never like to this capacity at all so I would consider this like my first major like heartbreak and I was so like guilty too because I was like oh my god the way that I treated my friends like when they were coming out of like maybe emotionally abusive relationships or like got cheated on or whatever and I was like he sucks like get over it kind of thing oh my god I felt so guilty because had had they like treated me the same way at that time I would have died yeah because it's also always so much easier said than done it's it's so much harder when you're in it like, yes and you don't you're not thinking logically you're thinking completely everything is based off of emotions especially when you're I would say like under 25 yeah I'm like hoping that there's like a switch eventually or maybe under like 27 even yeah. I feel like some of my friends are who are older have just like gone through so many breakups that they're able to like separate themselves almost for sure and you get get used to it and you know that that's like what it's going to be like and it gets better but like in this particular situation I didn't know that and also like like you said if you're like a really sensitive person or like a your emotions are like really heightened some people aren't like that like yeah I was just watching your episode with Kelsey Kreppel yesterday Mm -hmm. and she said like she's like breakups have always been so easy for me 
can no. not relate. I was like, actually, when she said that, I was like, wow. Like, I can it's just not, not relate. I, it's the hardest thing to me that I've ever gone through. And I have, like, I've gone yeah. through, like, really crazy stuff in my, like, my life, like, that I could separate myself from emotionally. And this, I was like, I could not get out of it. She didn't really like them, though. Yeah, that's what but, she was but, saying. Uh, but but I, still. I feel like, I mean, I loved, like, my ex or whatever, but, like, we had so many problems that yeah. I, the whole relationship, I was like, when this is over, I'm going to be relieved. And then when it was over, I was not relieved. <laughs> At all. That's very fair. I went through a big breakup and I, and the relationship was like very, very intense. Mm -hmm. And at one point I was, it took me a while to see how unhealthy it actually was. But when I was in it, I was like, this is so great. He's so great. And like he. I was like that too. You don't like, because you only see really like the exciting parts. Yes. You like internalize the exciting parts and everything else you're like whatever yes and then i got to the point after where i was like that breakup was the best thing that like ever happened to me in my entire life how long did it take you to get there so we had broken up twice so i think that helps because the first time i feel like when we broke up for good the second time it was like i was resuming the breakup at two months you know what i mean yeah so like you picked up where you left off with yeah. the first for the first time and you soft launched the breakup yeah yeah actually i know <laughs> i get this i like this was like on the internet right so i had to like fully actually announce oh, the breakup no. was so fucking annoying like it's stupid to say but i was like and then we're together like two weeks later i was like i actually I, hate myself. when i tell you i learned my lesson the hard way i this is embarrassing to admit online but when i initially went through this breakup i posted a video online literally going uh, like vlog style on tiktok going come with me to get cheated on for the very first <gasps> time I, wait. <laughs> and i'm not kidding that man was at my house two weeks later and i was like like how do i write wait, this wrong how did you film that video <laughs> so we had gone he performed at a festival that like in vegas so i we had been vlogging the whole time and then we broke up at the very end of the weekend got it so i just continued the vlog as usual but then i voiceovered <laughs> it like look at me looking so happy like wrong like i was it was so horrible and wrong. i posted it online mm -hmm. my and i felt so stupid because at the time i was like i got cheated on i'm never gonna get back with this man and then of course two weeks later i'm delusional and i'm yeah. like i'm gonna get back with this man <laughs> and i'm like how am i like i can't undo that so i'm like i will never ever ever do that again like i don't care if the man like literally kills my family what are your thoughts on like making a relationship public like w now what will you do um i think i will definitely be smarter about that this time around because i was very quick to be public with my last relationship because i was like this is amazing and yeah he, like and we're he, in love and he was like so excited about it and he's always like vlog this like vlog yeah. that and so i was like whatever no biggie but when you're in a position like you and I, where your job is literally to talk about your relationships and stuff online, it's scary when people know who he is because it's like, then if you say something bad, like as much as like, I like don't enjoy him as a person. I don't want people to like bully him online. And like mm -hmm. now since people do know who he is, like it's harder for me to say things and like yeah. tell the truth about what happened. You almost have to be like more like private about it because of yeah. that and it's really easy to get embarrassed by a man are you kidding oh like, my that's god the, the idea that there were people out there who were like could could see my <laughs> vlogs online and be like this man is dming me the like that's humiliating to me and i will never put myself in that position to be embarrassed ever again okay that's horrible but what i thought you meant is like after the fact like you know when your ex says something so embarrassing and it's like such a low moment and you're just like i can't believe i dated him like this happened to me recently this past week my friends and i were talking about it and i'm like it is just honestly downright humiliating the fact that i dated him and so if he would have have been someone with like a following that like people kept up with outside of our relationship on the internet and people would also see that that would be so humiliating to me and yeah. i'm so grateful that he doesn't have a platform for that reason yeah I you know I, yeah i don't have that see yeah <laughs> i do obviously I, i'm not like i don't want to say i would never be in a public relationship ever again because like who knows but i i don't I don't want to like slander anyone on like yes. I want to I want to be able to speak freely about like what's going on truly in my life without the fear of like that person getting any backlash mm -hmm. you know what I mean like keeping them out of it so you can like still share yeah because I, I want to be honest and like I want to talk about things and say like oh this happened this week this happened that week and like without people knowing who I'm talking about because mm -hmm. it's just like it my job is to share like overshare my life not somebody else's
Yeah. The thing, too, when you vlog that's tough is that you're sharing your actual life. And yeah. when you're dating someone, they're, they are a large chunk of your actual life. So that is what is so tough. Yeah, it is tricky, too, because especially if you're spending your, all your time together, it's like, what are you going to film? So that's why it was like, whatever, like, no biggie. Yeah. And I just thought, like, it, what can go wrong? Like, <laughs> literally, what can go wrong? So much can go wrong. Get ready with me to go get cheated on. <laughs> why did I do that? That's okay. so embarrassing. Like, public apology right now. I'm so sorry you guys had to see that, and that was humiliating, and I will never embarrass myself that way. Again. I honestly don't think it's embarrassing at all. I think it's really funny. It was hysterical at the time. I thought I was, like, the <laughs> funniest person alive. Wait, so when you guys got back together after that video, like, did you private it? Or, like, Oh, I, dele- I deleted that 30, 30 minutes out, but it's, like, it's on Reddit. It's, like, yeah, like it's, it. it's, it's, it's alive no that's well. really funny but yeah i had deleted the video and it's like i mean he, he this man did not he didn't physically cheat on me he he <laughs> was just dming girl he wasn't successful in cheating on me is what yeah. i should say he was trying uh-huh so i like felt guilty after that and i was like i can't believe i posted that and made him look so bad <laughs> Bruh. you're just too nice you know no that, i mean that when i tell you that cheating was the least of my concerns in that relationship i mean it <laughs> okay that is so funny you are now really in your influencing era i'm trying kind of no you are doing a great job you have your tiktok is the best i don't know how you always have something funny to say i just is it just natural like where is that coming from i don't know i just i want to say post me saying anything like i just every <laughs> thought that i have i'm like tiktok they need i this. delete more than half of them because i'm just like i'm like sometimes I'll, I'll watch something and i'll be like what did i even mean by I that? Do that it's like like going in your notes when you're high and like writing something <laughs> yeah. out and it's like potato skins and you're like what did i mean by that yes or when you're listening to a podcast and they're like this and that and this and like they don't even there's not a four i mean i do this all the time there's not an actual sentence formed with meaning <laughs> that's what when i look back at my tiktoks i'm like what the f-? like i just me too but it's i just i love it i love tiktok uh, me too it's my favorite place ever it really is what's your favorite platform um youtube i think yeah same youtube's my favorite um it's kind of trickier because it's like you have to put more effort into it but it's the only place where i like I don't know. I like long form. I love podcasting too, obviously. Yeah. I like long form and I like being able to just like share more or be more. I feel like you're able to like, not even, I don't know if being more authentic is the right word, but like you're able to just be. Yeah. And that is the content. I just, I I try to veer away from like Instagram and stuff just because it's so like, like I'm not good at being aesthetic. So it's like, it doesn't feel, it's not like easy for me, but YouTube is like, I don't care what I look like. Like, I don't care what I'm saying. It's just, I just post it what do you feel like it's affected like your mental health or like confidence going from like having a more traditional job to like content honestly i think it's been really good for it i feel like for a lot of people it's not <clears throat> and this can probably change at any time tana tells me that all the time she's like brooke please pay- place like no value in pe- other people's opinions of you because as soon as they switch up and that's like what you really care about it's gonna like really affect you so i try to be good about that but like when the podcast came out and stuff i feel like everyone was so nice and stuff that i was like like i felt more confident and just like better about my personality and stuff than, yeah and you're more on a high than i did point. before it is true though because people like there's some quote where they're like you just can't place your value in the good or the bad like you have to that's, just stay yeah, neutral that's what, uh tana always says that's so hard though when people are being so nice you know, I know because you want to internalize the good things, but I mean, it co- like you can't do one and not the other. Like as soon as people turn or like they start thinking like anything negative about you, you're going to believe that too. And that's bad. Does hate get to you? Oh, yeah. How so? People say this all the time, but like you could get a million nice comments and then like one bad comment that's like, like, I don't like her attitude. I'll be like, I think that person's right. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, they, shit. <laughs> people so. always say too, like actually my friend taylor always says this and i don't even really agree with it because like anything it doesn't it actually doesn't matter what they're saying it matters like what mood i'm in that day mm-hmm. but they're like it only bothers you if there's like a certain level of truth to it yeah i think it's when when something like is an insecurity of yours like it's like i hate being called annoying because i already think i'm annoying yeah. and I, I hate to even put that out there because now like anyone who <laughs> wants comments. to get to me will know how to but like it really hurts me to like be called annoying because i feel annoying it things that bother me are more so it's not even things it's not always things that I already think about myself it's things that I actually care about in life Mm -hmm. that bother me or like a lot of my friends 
are like normal people and like not influencers because they live in Texas. Mm-hmm. So if it's something about like my relationship with them or like the friend, like something like that, that bothers me. But yeah. it also just depends on the day. Like I can be in a great mood and like not give a fuck about anything. And then I'll be like, just in an You'll off just, like, mood, pro- yeah. I'll get a comment and I'm like, I'm making like, a TikTok in response or something, you Yeah, know? do you ever like respond at all to hate online? Normally, no, because I, th- I have this theory that the people who get a lot of hate, the reason they get so much hate is because they respond to the hate constantly. I think it's the same thing as like, not the same thing, but like, I don't think you should ever apologize for a joke because as soon as you do, you start having to apologize all the for time. For everything. It's the same thing, like people, like, send hate to the people who like they get a rise out of like, yeah i feel like if you never respond to it people will just get bored of it i really don't respond it's like and if i do sometimes <clears throat> i'll like unsend or there there was this one thing recently where this girl i posted an episode and this girl like didn't agree with it and posted a like seven frame story thing a screenshot of the episode and was like i love you but i hate this person and the person's like a good friend of mine and it was like when i tell you it was like 17 text things and it was the first thing i saw when i woke up in the morning and like got on my phone and i was just not having it and i responded something not i was like nice but i was still like why did i even i unsent the message and i was like i don't even care if she sees that i unsent it because it's not even worth my time like i always regret it when i respond exactly you know i don't know but it's it's hard not to be reactive especially when somebody is either like so wrong or you feel like really really like you don't agree with what they're saying it's really hard for me sometimes to just be like Brooke, it does not matter. Like, these people do not know you. If someone is sitting online and has so much time to talk so much shit about everyone else on the internet, it's like, all right, well, that's, like, embarrassing on your end. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to know that, but then when you're, like, constantly getting it, or even if it's, like, three comments out of the 3,000 you got that week. (laughs) And, like, when you're constantly getting the comments and they're so mean to you, it just almost feels impossible to not want to, like, punch them. I know. (laughs) know It's it's hard. I'm, like, I'm trying to get better about it. Because sometimes, like... When I see to another like creator or whatever um, respond to hate, I oh, it oh I always like feel weird about it. For it some gives reason. me the ick. It's like it, tacky it, almost. It, uh, it, yes. like I, I really agree, and so I I don't want to be that way. Cause it's easy to you. You look at them and you're like, all right, that's one out of fifty. I can think of this one girl who responds. I I swear to God, I think in every single video there's like something with hate, and that's what I mean of like there's always going to be hate because you're feeding it. Right. And it is really tacky. Yeah, and it's exciting for the people on the other end. They're like, oh my God, she got so mad. Like, let me say something else. <laughs> they love it. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like you are. Do you feel like you're confident, or do you feel like I feel like I'm very confident now i but i was not always that way at all okay let's do journey to confidence i feel like just growing up in like in college and high school and stuff i was extremely insecure and like i don't don't know what it stemmed from also i mean just being a teenager too i feel like you're really insecure and i don't feel like i really started getting confident until i was like in my mid 20s i mean i'm in my mid 20s now but like i think this kind of helped like kind of what i was saying where i was like not like I was feeling validated by people, but I like, I got to, or people got to know me more for my personality than anything. And that was like a really like big shift in like how I felt about myself, I feel like. Because that was like, I was always confident in my personality and like not confident in how I looked like when I was younger, which is so stupid. Cause what you're, what you look like, it's like, nobody cares what you look like. Yeah. But after that, I was like, like, I feel like overall, I just became more confident because I was like, okay, like, yeah, they think I, I'm funny. I like me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you think it was also that you found something you really like to do? Maybe. Um, I feel like I was also in, like, I was putting myself, not putting myself, but I was in a lot of positions to, like, f- compare myself to other people and, like, feel, like, bad about myself. I was in, I was, like, a dancer growing up, so, like, that's already, yeah, like, tough. a lot of girls in, like, positions like that are very insecure because it's, like, a lot of mirrors, a lot of other girls you're comparing yourself to. And then I graduated to being in a sorority which is like kind of the same vibe you're comparing yourself to like a million different girls and like that was really hard for me especially like body image and stuff but coming here like my friends now place value in things that are like so far outside of that and like maybe they're not great things to put value in but like it's not what you look like what you're eating like things like that and that all of a sudden I was like okay I don't care about that anymore was that intentional or did that just like kind of happen I think that was accidental honestly but like I remember I was never insecure like 
like I feel like girls usually start around like 11 12 like start like really noticing their body and like feeling insecure and stuff and I was so late to it because I I just didn't care and I remember one particular friend who was so insecure herself and she was constantly talking about like you know she's so fat she was not fat and even if she was who cares like but she was talking about it so much that I inter- like I started thinking like oh my god like am I fat kind of thing and that's where it all started so I realized how like influenced I was by like everyone around me so now it's really important to me kind of to be around only people who don't talk about stuff like that or like think about stuff like that care about stuff like that I had a similar moment in high school where and it's like you know in high school when you're all at someone's house and you're getting ready to go to the parties and then I think oftentimes that's when girls start like tearing themselves apart Mm -hmm. and everyone was in my room and everyone was just talking so negatively like about their body or how they look I mean it's just it's a being a teenager is tough it is it's very hard and I remember thinking like I I think this is like kind of where it starts I mean obviously it starts younger than that in childhood but I do think a lot of it is like vocalizing and not that you shouldn't vocalize insecurities it's not what I mean it's just like talking so negatively around other people who are like imp- we're all so impressionable at that time yes that I was like I never when I'm a mom like I never ever in a million years ever want to talk I don't even want to talk about my body in front of my kids at, at all. all that's where so much of it comes from too like in a lot of people I think that's why for a lot of people it starts a lot younger is because you you are around that and you're you know your, your mom makes comments about how things don't fit you and stuff like it's crazy how many people that happens to yeah I was opposite of that where my like I grew up with my grandparents so they were very like who cares Mm -hmm. like eat whatever you want and I never had any of that at home thank god but that's so horrible and I would never do it to my kid ever it's like I've had so many friends who have seen their moms be like that and it's like disgusting to me because it's like that like they will carry that forever forever I didn't even realize how common of a thing it was until it like started almost like trending on TikTok when like, girls with the almond mom yes thing that they're talking yes about. and I was like wait what are you guys talking about like I just also I feel like that is such a horrible thing that if my mom would have ever said anything to me one time that would have scarred me for life it you does, know so let alone growing up in that like that's crazy it's horrible I remember I had a friend of mine her mom was like just so like one of those who like lives through her child kind of thing yeah and she would she would tell my friend like like that looks horrible on you and my, that friend of mine was skinnier than me yeah. so so then i'm thinking like this mom thinks i look horrible like it's just like why like it's literally, crazy why it will never make sense to me so it's interesting to me though that now you live in la where i feel like people struggle with comparison like you the would, worst you would think that i know but i think maybe just the group i'm in i still have like instances or i have like certain friends who i like that's kind of like one of my boundaries in the beginning of a friendship i'll say like you don't talk about that stuff around me i'm so sorry but like you can't because i'm i will like it's contagious to me like if i have a friend it. who's constantly like oh i can't eat that and i'm like sitting there with a bowl of pasta i i, I will say to them like please don't say that at all like literally ever again around me ever please but most of my friends like first of all are guys so like like gay guys so it's like Mm -hmm. they don't they definitely don't care and then like my best friends like tana and everybody like we eat whatever we want all the time and it's not like it's definitely not a topic amongst our group that's so great yeah what are some of the things that you find value in now outside of like looks um personality i like being funny being yeah. funny i think that's like the the thing that can instantly make me really really like somebody is like them being funny or like just nice like people who are nice i don't care like everyone's good looking here yeah like literally everybody and if you're not you're p- probably better than <laughs> the people who are so yeah. it's kind of funny because you would if pretty much everyone is good looking you would think that people are looking for good personality which i think more often they are because it's just like the norm being like a 15 out of 10 is the norm here Mm -hmm. but it's interesting because like that could go one of two ways either you have way worse comparison or none at all because everyone's hot yeah i feel like i don't know i go back and forth that's not to say like i don't still compare myself i will go out and i'll be like oh my god that girl is so beautiful like why don't i look like that of course like it's natural but i feel like i experience it a lot less since like or having lived here versus being at home well and also it sounds like it's like boundaries you can't we have i had a situation in the past year where i was like i can't be around this in a friendship because it's gonna make me feel this way like exactly what you were saying yeah and it is really important to know that and to like 
even if I'm like, I'm not sitting there thinking, I'm setting a boundary. Like, I'm just like, I, I can't do that. It is that is honestly like the biggest like it's like a life-changing thing yeah and we can kind of choose our friends now but whereas back then or like when you're younger you can't like you're always around kind of the same people very very true okay i wanted to talk to you about your favorite products because you have like the best makeup routine oh my god thank you it's really amazing (laughs) like it's just beautiful so what are your top like three or four makeup products okay my favorite 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 makeup product i think ever is the tarte face tape foundation i'm like i'm not just saying that tart i really <laughs> tart, use, tart tart i've used it for probably like i went to an event of theirs like four years ago and or three years ago when it like first came out and i have n- i literally have not used another foundation since wow and so sometimes i'll mix in like another one just to like change the consistency a bit but i love it so much and then i just i made a makeup tutorial the other day and I, I like said my like three favorite products in it and all three of them are getting discontinued so like stop like one of them was like morphe setting spray i live and die <gasps> wait, by no that way that's my favorite product well, i'm pretty sure isn't morphe <gasps> going out of business wait duh oh my god i didn't even think about that yeah stock up girl i'm like no i'm literally gonna order wait, like we gotta 15. order them before this comes out yeah too. <laughs> actually i'm immediately and then the item beauty um cream blush love it so much also i think item beauty is either going out of business or like coming out of sephora or something and they're out of sephora i'm hoping that they're just taking a break i'm like addison you come know on. i love it <laughs> um and then i think that's like all my like holy grails everything else i'll kind of like interchange what about mascara another controversial one telescopic i've been using telescopic since i was like <laughs> wait that's not the michaela one right it is oh, wait, no. what do you think about that situation okay yeah do you think i mean i think she put i think 100 percent she put lashes on but i also think it's hysterical okay like this is what i think i have two th- thoughts it is so important to be honest and to take your thing seriously and whatever and in the exact same breath it is so important to go outside and touch grass and just live in life i know i have a hard time with it because i get i get why people are upset for sure same but also it's laughable that like somebody can get canceled over like a little a little lash at the end of their eye Like, like it is bad don't get me wrong what she did i'm not standing up for that i know but i am saying that it is crazy that the whole internet was like taken by storm due to lashes. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I do kind of have like contradicting opinions on it because it's like it is funny, but also like I don't want to be lied to because I am impressionable. Same. I am buying these things from these people. I know, but it's like and it is really bad. I guess maybe because I'm not honestly, I don't really, I don't know if I'm like looking at ads and thinking like I have to buy it. It's not like end all be all for me. So maybe if it was someone that I followed. And again, I do think it's bad. I don't think that this is what you should be doing. <laughs> no one's canceling you. No, no, but I just mean, like, I really do think it's not a good thing to do. But I also, I'm like, it's just crazy. Like, people are, like, losing sleep over this. Yeah. I think that's where it, like, gets a little bit, like, out of control for me. Because obviously, I don't agree with it. But the people who, like, are really going, you know, so ham making the videos, like, to prove it. They're doing, like, all the, it's like a conspiracy theory. Yes. They're, like, zooming in and counting the lashes. I'm like, it's like, dude, okay, she put on, on a lash. Like, what are we going to do? Kill her? Like, are you going to kill her? Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's crazy. And then they, and of course, it goes so much further than that. They'll go, like, deep and say, you know, she's faking her accent. And And everything else. Now it's like, I don't know. I do feel bad for people in positions like that. And it's like, I get scared. It's really easy to get canceled. Do you think that she'll, like, come out of this fine? I think so. I I do. I feel like everyone does. Listen, if you're going to cancel someone, make it, like, someone who's doing something, like, genuinely, like... I, I think that there are a few other things that are going on in the world that are more important to be canceled over mascara than the mascara. Gate. I think that I've been <laughs> mascara gate. What is another like internet? What's like internet drama that you just think is crazy? I know a lot of people are like, like really upset about Alex Earl getting so big, but I'm obsessed with her. Oh yeah. Okay. Why are they upset? Oh, because she, I don't know. She's just like a white skinny girl. Yeah, but Got I it. like. What I love about Alex Earl is that like. I feel like historically the people who are blowing up are like the really natural like young fresh faced like you know Charlie D'Amelio's and I love I love Charlie D'Amelio but I love to see like someone you know just like loaded in makeup fake boobs like that's who true. like goes out and drinks every night like I love her because like I relate more to her because yes. I'm you know I'm wearing makeup I'm like going out and drinking every night I was in college and like doing what she did and like she's the first influencer that i'm like wow you're so relatable to me this was also like back in the day on the internet you when i was in high school i mean obviously we were in high school but like you couldn't even like 
no one was talking about drinking or like smoking weed even on the internet and honestly tana really was the first one that it was like, like so outlandish at that yes, time I it think, was crazy then. yeah because everybody was afraid i think too like like that it would affect your ability to like get a real job and stuff and like that's still true but i feel like i've already kind of that ship has sailed for me for sure i've like talked about like shaving my butthole on the internet <laughs> when did you do that i don't remember but i'm sure i have <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really quick. Have you ever gotten a Brazilian wax? Yes. Have you not? No, I've never gotten one, but I'm getting one this week. Okay, it's not that bad. Okay. Well, what's your pain tolerance? I'm pretty high, I think. Okay, so I put it off until I was like 22, 23. And I was like, listen, this is, it was my biggest fear in life. It's I, my biggest fear in life, but I'm like, I have to do it. And you have to do it. And I really thought, like, it was going to be the worst thing that ever happened to me. And don't get me wrong, like, it is painful. Well, can you do laser? I've never gotten laser. Okay, so here's the thing. I did Brazilian waxes for a while, and then I ended up getting laser, and laser is the exact same price, or uh, it was like 65 a session, the exact same price, and it's forever. You only yeah. have to do it like six to eight My times. My issue with doing that is that I'm, I'm, I tan. Okay, so that's the other problem. So I literally tan around, because I also live in Texas, so I'm not like in swimsuits right now. Mm -hmm. I did it during the winter, and I like tan. I just don't tan, like self-tan my Brazilian. So it looks oh, crazy, okay. but like I'm not, you can't even tell like at night because you can only tell if you're like shining direct sunlight, but yeah. I would, I would recommend laser, but Brazilian's not that bad. Take like a pain med okay. and go in. Maybe I'll take like a little like, I don't know, Benadryl or something. Yeah. I I'm like Disassociate <laughs> a little bit and then you'll be in and out in like 12 minutes. Okay, good. So I'm, just be like, oh, I just know? need to do it. I like, I always talk about it. I'm going to eventually end up doing laser, but... I've just right now I'm tanning so yeah laser is worth it though do it start it in like October I know that's that's what I should have done and every year I say I'm gonna do that yeah. and then I don't it's not bad but, but I'm like what if this is like to just throwing it out there what if the bush comes back and all of us are just bald honestly I just don't think I'm ever gonna be into it my life is just so much easier but like do you have anything else that you've thought that you would never be into that you're into that's now so true yeah you bring up I really have good so points. many things like that okay but laser it doesn't actually last like forever forever I think you actually oh, have to you go think back. like maybe when I'm 40 my bush will just come back yeah I think you have to go back and like I don't have years. a bush by the way no like but five I'm just years. A, I'm just a bush advocate yeah you you, you really clearly I'm are. a voice for the bush it is a valid point, but it, I don't think, like, laser isn't actually forever, forever. Okay. And I think when you have kids, it comes back, too. I think you have to, like, get laser again after you have kids or something like that. Hmm. I've heard this. So maybe it'll be fine, but honestly, it's just not worth it to me. Like, also, the freedom that you have to just have it lasered off is just unmatched. That is really, it's va very valuable. Yeah. Maybe I'll do it. I'll I'm really it. proud of you, though. Getting Thank a Brazilian, you. your first Brazilian. I'm so Brazilian. excited. I'm, like, I'm texting my group chat, like, who wants to come? <laughs> But hold your hand. One time, this is like my second or third Brazilian. I was on the table, and you're like sitting and like very, you're like butterfly up. There's like all these positions. You see, that's see. what I'm scared of. And they like, tell you when they're nice. Where are you? Do you know where you're going? I don't know yet. So you haven't scheduled it yet? No. Okay, so we got. I'm just. It. It's really just a thought right now. Okay, so, I'm trying to ga gauge the audience. So I was sitting on this table, and I was getting a Brazilian, and we're like. And let's say this appointment is 15 minutes. We're probably like f like five or six minutes into this, and she's asking me all these questions and whatever, and we're just like talking. You talk through it normally, which like makes it because they're trying to distract you like from the, the pain. gynecologist. So exactly. Like Schofield German? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. As they're like in your vagina. <laughs> But in the middle of it, she's like, oh, my God, like, by the way, I have watched your YouTube no. videos <laughs> for years. And I was like, oh. I, I actually do think that that would make me feel maybe better. It would have made me feel so much better if she would have said it at the beginning. But she was asking questions that were like, like oh, certain and questions. you'd already overshared and for I'd somebody who knew you. For, but someone that I honestly not even for knew me. It's like I just thought I would never in my life have any sort of interaction with this girl ever again. Or it would just be a Brazilians. And I thought that was like, that was the lane that we were going to go to. We were going to oh, okay. stay at client, client confidentiality, if you will. Yeah, you know? but now she has all this info. And I said all these things that I just shouldn't have said. Like, I, you know, when you like oversharing. Oh, yeah. oh yes, I do. It's a different level on the Brazilian table because you're just because like. Because you're so vulnerable already. Yeah, you're so vulnerable and you're like so stressed out about it. Like, just, she's looking into my butt. So yeah, like, like well, we can't get more intimate than this, honestly. It's yeah. like, it really almost is like in ways more intimate than sex because they're oh, just. Absolutely. It, it really Are you kidding is. me? She's waxing your butthole. It is very true. That's a good point. And so it was fine. And she was super nice and it was fine. But it made, I was like, oh my God, I'm, I hate myself right now. I literally Wow, that's hate really myself. scary. Next time you got to get 
like a really like a real random who would have never who would never in my (laughs) years like someone who's like 40 and like i had no idea and she was so nice and like it was fine i just like and it would have made me feel better it did make me feel better honestly throughout it but it would have made me feel so much better if it was at the beginning you know what maybe just post on your instagram story ask if you have any brazilian wax (laughs) anyone here a brazilian (laughs) waxer Imagine the like creepy guys that are just like, yeah, me. Yeah, actually. Oh my that's gosh. Scary. I, oh God, I need to show you this video. I'm at, at a friend's house last night. We're just, you know, drinking out or like drinking wine, like eating pizza, watching a movie. And Lila, my one of my good friends, is like, I'm going to have a guy come do an in hall or in house massage. <laughs> Look, I can't. We can't even show it on the podcast, but you just need to see and live react to this video. Look at what I walked in on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that is <laughs> for touch. for audio listeners. This the masseuse is laying flat on the table, and Lila is like literally Cirque du Soleil style in the air on this guy's legs. I'm like, what kind of massage is this? <laughs> Wait, what kind of like? Really I don't like, know, but like just the. Like no, we that walked in there, insane. like there's no way that this is happening right now. I'm like, that- where did you find this contact? First of all, <laughs> and the fact that she didn't even think that was weird. Like she didn't, she didn't like call for us. Like, hey, like guys, what, what's going on in here? We just walk in, and that's what's happening. And the fact that everyone, she just like wanted everyone to be there. Hysterical. That is I was literally, so funny. That's How do you even find me. these things? Oh, no clue. But I'm, I'm like weird about. I get scared about house calls and stuff because I'm like, what if they kill you? Do you, what do you do? Do you do anything house call? Not really, no. Yeah, I normally go places, but I do my tanning, my self tan or my spray tans. Oh yeah, that, that's that's a good one to do because it's like just annoying to have to go in and then sweat all the way home. No, actually, when you're standing like this, it's just so yeah. That's another thing that's um. Do you like? That's another thing that is very intimate. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like the like bend over. Yeah, because you're you are like your butt is or like you know. sometimes I like my boobs will be sagging a little bit and I have to like lift, lift them up. Them up. Yeah. yeah, it's tough. It really is tough. I'm really excited for your Brazilian wax, so I think it's going to be good I for you. I can't wait. You know what? I'll update you as soon Please as that happens. Do. I'm really excited. You and should I just vlog need your to. experience. I'm going on a little weekender, and I'm, like, excited to I just, like, not have to shave the whole time. So. No, it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. Woo-hoo! Wow, well, thank you for coming on. I love talking Brazilian waxes and Oh, my God, that was so, Is it over already? Yeah. That was so quick. I know. That was really fast. Oh, my God. Yay. Wow, yay. Well, where can they find you? I am on tiktok and instagram and youtube i prefer youtube and the canceled podcast will be back pretty soon yay. here tana and i just signed a contract and then becca and i also just signed a contract for a new podcast so and that'll yay. those will both probably roll out in like march so oh pr- pretty soon here so exciting Woo-hoo. thank you so much for having <laughs> thank me thank you all right guys i hope you enjoyed if you did let me know by giving it a nice thumbs up and subscribe for more